Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about message box options. There's a whole bunch of options you can set when you're using message boxes. We're going to talk about the icons and the buttons you can have and the responses and all that stuff. And most importantly, I'm going to show you how to set no as the default option instead of yes. Today's question comes from Jasper in Euless, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Jasper says, I've been using a message box in my program to double check with users before they delete a lot of data. The problem is if they hit a key by accident, the message box defaults to yes, which could cause important data to be erased. I tried to reword the message to make yes cancel the deletion, but it doesn't sound right. This will delete data. Would you like to cancel this request? It sounds dumb. Is there a way to simply change it so the default button is no? Why, yes, of course, Jasper. Let's take a look how to do that. Now, before we get started, if any of you have not used a message box before, go watch this. It'll teach you how a message box works and how to get a reply from it. And of course, all of this is developer level stuff, which means you'll need to know a little VBA, but don't panic. VBA is pretty simple. And in fact, using a message box is real easy. Just go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. These are both free. Go watch them and come on back. All right, Jasper. So to teach you how to do that, how to set the default button equal to no, we got to learn a little bit more about the message box options. Now, if you look at the message box function on Microsoft's website, you'll see right down here, it takes a bunch of parameters. All right, we got the prompt, which is the only one you really need. And then some optional ones, buttons, title. These are the only two we're going to worry about today. Then there's help file stuff. Ignore the help file stuff for now. All right, so the prompt you're all familiar with, right? It can be up to 1024 characters long, although you should never have a message box anywhere near that length. But you call it like this, message box. Picard is the greatest captain, exclamation point. He is, no question about it. And you get this, real simple message box as Microsoft Access with an okay button. That's all. That's just to give someone a, you know, a notice. Let them know what's up, right? All right, continuing on with that prompt definition. All right, if it consists of more than one line, you can separate it using CHR 1013 or I like to use a VB new line. And you just do it like this, right? Picard is the greatest captain. Dot 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 new line and then right here a VB new line character, which is a 1013 combination. And then you put ever, and then your box looks like this. You can actually put lines in your message box and it looks nice. And yes, you can put extra blank lines in there if you want to. Now, moving on to the buttons. All right, there's a, a crazy definition with buttons and they all have weird values and all that stuff. But essentially, there's some button constants you're gonna use to, to specify what buttons you want. All right, here are the different button constants, the options you need to learn. VB OK only, which is just an OK button. OK cancel. There's abort retry ignore. This goes back to the old days. Remember this? Abort retry ignore those from like the DOS days. All right. Then we got yes, no, cancel. That's my favorite one. I like yes, no, and cancel, especially to prompt users for things where they could potentially like damage stuff, like delete a lot of records. Because sometimes people get a message box of just yes and no, and they're not sure what which one they want. Uh, what do I do? If you give them that cancel option, it at least lets them say, okay, back up. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to answer yes or no. Just cancel what you're doing. So I always like to give them yes, no, and cancel. Okay. Then you got just yes, no, and then retry cancel. You don't got to worry about what these numbers mean. I'll talk about them in just a minute. Okay. But all you need to worry about is this stuff. And you don't even really have to worry about remembering these or memorizing these because when you go to create your message box, when you hit comma here after the prompt, you're gonna get IntelliSense and it's gonna give you a big long list of all the options. Just find the one you want, like okay, cancel, okay? And if you watch my other video, you've seen this in action and we're gonna do an example toward the end of class. All right, so here it is with okay, cancel after it. You get okay and cancel. Now having okay and cancel buttons is meaningless if you can't get that response from the user, which is what we talked about in the other video. All right, so we can use a variable to get the value from message box. Now notice here, you got to put parentheses around your message box, whereas before we didn't need them. If you're just doing it so that you're just giving a message and you're not getting a response, you don't need the parentheses. But if you want to return the value, you need the parentheses here because now message box is acting as a function. It's going to return a value. 
and we're going to store it in response. And yes, yes, I know before the technical people get on me, I know technically this returns an integer, but I always use long instead of integer. And there's reasons why, and I'm not going to take the time to go into them now. All right, but now we got yes and no, and we can actually get that value back. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but we already did it in the other video, so you know. All right, now, in addition to just a plain Jane message box, you can also get little cool little icons and sounds. Some of them make different sounds, right? There's critical, question, exclamation, and information. That's what they look like there. Me personally, I pretty much only use question and then critical because this one makes the big bonk noise, right? And the question is like, you know, hey, well, do you, you want to answer this for me, right? These two, yeah, you can use them. I don't often use these, these ones that much. Now, how do you specify those different ones? Well, you add the values together. First, you pick what buttons you want. Here, I got just yes and no. And then you add to that the style that you want, right? Add critical, add question, add exclamation, and so on. And Access will add those together internally. All right, and after you pick your button style, you hit the plus. And as soon as you hit plus, you'll get your IntelliSense back again. And you can add those values. Now, again, for the technical people, right, some trivia, what actually happens is those values get added together internally. Okay, so you get a unique combination of all the different button numbers. So for example, if you pick OK Cancel, that's one, and Critical, that's 16, that adds up to 17, and Access knows there's only one possible way you can get the combination of 17 and it's those with those two buttons. All right, so that's technically how it works. Do you have to remember this? No. Do you have to use these numbers at all? No. Just like, giving you some trivia because it's just sometimes cool to learn this stuff, right? <laughs> All right, now there's another option. There's a bunch of options, tons of options, right? There's more options. Here's the default button option. First, second, third, fourth, okay? So if we take yes, no, cancel and add default button three, notice one, two, three. When the message box opens, notice this guy is the default button. All right, so this should answer your question. If the message box pops up and the guy accidentally hits enter or space bar, it's going to cancel. Okay. And that is a great idea for something that's dangerous, like accidentally deleting records. Have cancel be your default. Now, this has come up a couple of times in the forums on my website over the last couple of years. But unfortunately, there isn't a no default button option. In other words, when that message box pops up, one of those buttons will be selected. So if the user hits space bar or enter, it's going to push a button. So you, you want to make sure it's the safest option because there's no way to turn that off. All right. Now, in my Access Developer 11 and 12 classes, I do show you how to build a project called the Universal Dialog Box. It's this thing, right? And you can specify the colors, the message, the title, what buttons appear, what the captions on the buttons are whether or not there's a default button, all that, all those options, because you, you control this form and it pops up as a modal form. All right, so if you want to learn how to do that, there's the link. I'll put it down below. You can click on it, check it out. But no, for those of you who've asked me over the last couple of years, if there's a way to not have a default button, nope, sorry, can't do it. Not with the, not with the built-in message box. All right, now there are some options. If you look at the big long list on Microsoft's website, there are some options that no longer work. One of them is VB System Modal. All right, the default is application modal. It works just like a modal form, right? When that form pops up, you have to close that form before you can work on anything behind it. Kind of like when you got a customer form and you want to open up the contacts, you can't change the customer behind it, right? So message boxes normally work where they're modal. You cannot continue doing anything else in the database, working with forms, opening tables, that kind of stuff, until you answer that message box, right? You have to hit your okay or cancel before anything else works. Now, back in the day, the old days, and I'm not exactly sure how long ago this changed. I'm going to guess probably changed around like Windows 7 or so. I, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. But in the old days, when Access first came out, it could do a system modal dialog box, which means that when Access popped up a message box, you had to answer it and you couldn't even switch to another application. You couldn't even switch over to Notepad or, or Excel. Access took control. New versions of Windows prevent one application from doing this, right? A single application can't hijack the whole operating system now. So they've, they've encapsulated that. But in the old days, you could do this. You can't anymore, though. And again, I'm just full of trivia today, aren't I? Benefit of being old. <laughs>
Another option that doesn't work is the VB message box set foreground. This used to be cool back in the day. Again, if um, let's say you've got your database running in the background, like you open it up and you've got something that like a timer event that runs or you, you know, you have it so you can receive messages from other users on your network. Well, if access wanted to generate a message and pop up a message box, it could throw uh, itself the access application up as in the foreground window. But nowadays, again, this option doesn't work. If access is minimized or behind something else and you've got like your web browser up in front of it, 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 it won't work. You'll still see the you'll still see the the taskbar icon change but it won't it can't put itself in the foreground anymore so again it's just another option that no longer works but it's still in there there's another option called message box help button and we talked about this before where there's different options where you can specify a help file now i'm not a big fan of help files all right hlp and chm files I, I don't I don't like them. I might do a video on them in the future. They're kind of weird to put together. I do have my own help system option. All right, I put this video together a couple of years ago to show you how you can build your own help system inside of Access. And I like doing it this way better. But unfortunately, this doesn't work with message boxes. You can make your own little help buttons and stuff or control the F1 key, but it doesn't it doesn't work with the the message box help button. But with this option, right, you can get a help button in your message box for the user, okay? But it requires an, uh, it should be HLP, not HML, duh. Um, there, I fixed it, HLP. All right, but the, making these is a pain. Again, I might do a video on it in the future, but for now, just ignore that option. For those of you with languages like Hebrew or Arabic where it's right to left, there's some other options. There's VB message box right. Now, you can use this if you want to, even if you're using English. It'll just make the text align on the right side of the box, okay? The other one is, all right, folks, that's going to do it for part one. We'll see you on Monday for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, 
Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.